Hello. Howdy. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go. Hi, everyone. Yo, Josh, are you leading this thing today? Sure. sure. Can someone else take notes in that case? Yeah, I can help. Okay. Are you wearing a robe? Me? No, I'm wearing a hoodie. Ah, okay. Isn't a hoodie just there a really go. short robe? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Depends on whether or not it zips in the front. Yeah, no, it zips in the but front. Some robes do too. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> yep. This is like the is it a sandwich or a hot yeah. dog? Okay. Question. Yeah, I was just I was seeing that color and stuff, and I'm like, Paris is wearing a Jedi robe. She is. She is a Jedi. Okay. Uh, let's see, are we, we're already recording. So welcome everybody to the May 21st meeting of CNCF Contributor Strategy. As always, uh, this meeting is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct, therefore be nice. Um, and um, we have somewhat of an agenda today. Um, let's start with survey stuff. Um, so this is for the maintainer survey. Um, Paris, you want to bring us up to date on this? Yes, I'm attempt. I'm trying to do notes and and this on the <laughs> iPad. So this is going to be awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So survey. I got the governance side of the house questions. I added some stuff for kind of contributor growth and weaved some some things into um, what y'all had suggested, made some edits, um, got that back to you in chat. I don't have it on the agenda though. I'm looking at that right now. So let me get the link to the question so you can see that. Or if someone else is in Slack right now and can grab that, that would be awesome. What are we linking? I'm sorry, is it the governance question survey? Yep, yep. Because I have that right now. Okay, cool. I will do that. Yes, that would be awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> um, and right now, I think we stand at 12-ish questions, which is kind of a lot. Uh, I think there is one question on there that we could probably like combo. Um, so I wanted everybody to give it uh, at least one more look over. Um, and then there will be instructions as well about, hey, if you have survey fatigue, that's cool, me too. Uh, 
we can either A, come talk to you, or B, you can come talk to us and ask, and, you know, answer these same questions just verbally and we'll have a dialogue about it. Um, that's cool too. So that'll be the instructions. But it definitely needs uh, another, it definitely needs another edit round, um, but I think once we have an edit round on the survey and then also an edit round on the email to make sure that we're hitting all the points, because I think there's at least three points in the email that we're trying to hit home, um, you know, then I think we'll be good to go with kind of like our first communication out of the gate that's proactive and personally inviting to the contributors. And in most cases, maintainers. Wait, uh, I'm listening. I was just also reading. Questions so, in the notes? Sorry. Because we came up with a bunch of questions from governance, but that shouldn't be everything because they were specifically governance questions. Right, no, and I added, I added um, some contributor growth and maintainer -y circle, not necessarily direct maintainer -y circle, but um, stuff that's related, uh, I weaved it into it. So y'all had eight questions when you, when you yeah. linked it in chat. So I added four. Um, that's why I said it, it might be too long at this state. Um, maybe like one or two, not, you know, just one or two, try to get it down to like, you know, a no more than 10 minute survey. Cause there, now there are like, I think two or three long questions. Um, but we can like put those at the bottom and reorder them in a way where it's not scary. And it looks like the easy questions are first. Okay. Um, but I'd like to target to get this out as soon as possible. So whatever y'all's review bandwidth looks like, um, let me know. And be honest, um, I've been dragging my feet on this as well, so. Okay. Um, I guess one of the questions I always have with some of these surveys when they start to get longer is, can we offer any kind of incentive um, that would, um, uh, you know, that would make people more likely to complete the survey. I was thinking that too, honestly. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the state of Druid Pinnacle? Can we ship shirts? <laughs> um, I mean, what shirts would you ship though? Like, I don't these know, are all CN Kubernetes ones or something. These are all CNCF projects. So theoretically they should all have logo wear available from the CNCF store, at least in theory. Sandbox won't, though. Oh, you're right. And we do want to hear from the Sandbox projects. The, um, and I am not Sorry. willing to volunteer to do swag design for every project that fills out the survey. No, for sure. That's why I was like, uh, if, we, like the, if, a, if we can give a code, that's great. Plus. The, um, so... Someone in chat wants to join the call, the one that's working on the uh, end user stuff, by the way. Sorry to derail. Okay. We're not, we're not to that yet, but he's welcome. I know. To I know. That's what I just said. Okay. Done. Okay. Um. I'll say that the biggest incentive actually is just knowing what we're going to do with the survey. It's short and sweet saying how it's going to help people or not. Mm -hmm. That matters more to me when I fill it out than anything else. I don't really want another t-shirt or stickers or anything. Yeah. I don't want yeah. to like give someone my address. So I think if we're just brief and clear on how it's going to help people, and they trust that we'll follow through. That means a lot more than anything else we do. Yeah. In that case, that's the tack we're taking. And I have not looked over this document since Paris added a bunch of questions is we should really have 
several questions that allow maintainers to complain about the CNCF because that will get them to fill it out. <laughs> I mean, it sounds terrible, but I'm willing to bet that it's true. So oh, Amy knows what you're talking about. <laughs> so the other thing that I was thinking about too, though, is the method of delivery because, mm -hmm. um, you know, we know that there's like the survey monkey issue with meaning like it's, it might take forever to get that completed from LF side. I was thinking of what if we put these questions into like an issue template on our yeah. repo and then people can come in and just fill out an issue and then it doesn't necessarily, you know, or rather if they, you know, if they want to be anonymous, then we can send them some other kind of form of sorts um, um, and they can be anonymous that way. Let me stop um, you there, which is when we decide that we're done with the questions, I can produce a survey monkey survey in a couple of days, depending okay. on my personal schedule. Well, I thought the problem is we had to use the Linux Foundation yes, assets. Do. Okay. Yes, we do. But I, but um, the um, I actually have access to that for producing a bunch of the Kubernetes surveys. So um, the um, the one the only delay sometimes is that there's a limited number of accounts, so a bunch of us swap off accounts, but but there would not no, be a huge delay in producing that. I thought the point was that we had to have that disclaimer though, that we don't have on the Kubernetes surveys. Since Which, we're technically CNCF, like the, there's like a Linux foundation survey disclaimer that they have to use for CNCF. I don't know, is Amy on the line from a legal perspective? Not from a legal perspective, no. I am on the line. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know that she's ready to take that on yet. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She hasn't even graduated yet. No, no, no. I mean, because I have not, access not to the... I mean, I have access Continue. to the Kubernetes survey monkey too. So, I mean, if that's fine, then let's just do that. Oh, right. So this is a separate one from the Kubernetes one. The, yeah. um Well, no, the Kubernetes one is the CNCF one. It's the same right. one. That's, so, that's why I'm like, what's the difference? Like, maybe there's an extra disclaimer we have to put in the header, but presumably there's boilerplate for that. All right, well, who's taking the action to put the questions inside of the tool? Yeah. Is that so like, I mean, there might be other reasons why we want to have the survey available in a different format, but let's not do it because we're assuming there's some going to be some huge delay for SurveyMonkey because okay. I just don't believe there is. And that's fine too. Yeah, I don't think people, I don't know that GitHub is really a good option for filling out a survey just because of the anonymity aspect and all that. I mean, I know we'd have an option for people, but that just then becomes more work for overhead and more potential for stuff to get yeah. misplaced and all that jazz. I mean, to be fair, I don't see a way for somebody to actually fill the survey out and effectively be anonymous. It would be very easy to figure out from the answers who they were. Paris, are you the one that made comments in this doc with your little slashes instead of using like the comment feature? Yeah, I can't comment for some reason. I need to do like an, a, re, a, a new install of- What am I gonna docs. do with you? <laughs> what am I gonna do with you? Sorry, I JavaScript commented on you. Um, <laughs> sorry. I was like, are um, these real? Is this comments? I don't know what this is. <sighs> so Josh, you're putting it in SurveyMonkey. When do you, when do you want to do that? I'm taking notes. Um, after we decide that we are finished composing all of the questions and the intro. Okay. Yeah, I've made some suggestions on reworking some of the questions, like some of the stuff that you had, Paris, um, being kind of the long answer, like you can actually make it a yes, no, and then have it be a yes, you know, if yes, please tell us more. And that also could remove some of the potential for fatigue, because to be frank, I think for a lot of those questions, you're not going to have a lot of people say yes. Um, so, in actuality, it makes it a shorter survey. Cool. 
Well, I'm ready to send after edit, after y'all well, edit. I'm sure I, you want to look at. <laughs> I'm no, sure you I mean, want to look at my edits. Yeah. So the other that question is sounded going good to, to me. Yeah. The other question is going to be, um, how do we get the attention of maintainers across the CNCF suite of projects? I thought we were going yeah, to email I mean, their dev lists. About, yeah, but when you talk about survey, I'm going to be completely frank. When you talk about survey fatigue, I am survey fatigued from CNCF surveys. I get maintainer, ambassador, I don't know what else, twice a year at least, but it seems like much more often. I don't know. It just seems like there's always a survey. <laughs> and they also can be very long, which makes it harder. Yeah, and especially like in the H1, H2 type surveys, like I don't necessarily have anything that changes. So, um, whoa, that was a weird noise my head buds just made. Um, I think that it's good to have like, you know, a clear kind of, I think it's good that these questions are very different than what the CNCF surveys ask. And I, I saw that was commented somewhere. Um, and I think maybe we make that a little more clear in the email as well, that like, we know you're getting surveys already. <laughs> this is a different one. And this has a different type of questions. Cause isn't the CNCF survey going on now? Yeah, I think that's a broader one that's not specific to maintainers, but I remember that taking me a really long time to finish because it was like 17 pages or something. Okay. Oof, I hadn't opened that one yet, and now I'm not going to. <laughs> I was say, I just had yeah, a it's, lot it, it, of survey emails. <laughs> yeah, I asked a lot of kind of in-depth questions about different uh, CNCF projects, basically. It's like how to use Kubernetes, how to use et cetera, and do you use this in production? And it was very yeah. long. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we're also gonna have to do we'll have to do a bunch of social media stuff. And for those of us who happen to know project maintainers personally, mm -hmm. probably ping them. I thought we were sending out to dev lists too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll um, let's write that if we can take notes. Hold on. Um, I'm taking notes at the end of the the email. Um, so we're gonna, the strategy is one, send a dev lists. Uh, the second one is post to the CNCF blog. Yeah. Um, probably next time we have a TOC SIG leads meeting. When is that next, Amy? That is our next meeting on June 2nd. So, you got so that, yeah, that might also be a good time to announce this. And so that gives us a deadline because there are a bunch of people who are both SIG leads and are project leaders for some of the projects. So, um, um, all right. So this is what we've got so far. Um, yeah. We've got, sorry, I was taking notes too. Uh, send a dev list, uh, post to CNCF blog, TOC meetings, Slack channels that are applicable, the ambassadors, and Twitter. Okay. I think we've covered like 100,000 people right there. <laughs> um, all right. Okay. Um, okay, so... Uh, can I go on to yeah. working group stuff? Please do. We done with next steps? Okay, cool. So let's start out with uh, the contributor growth working group. So do we, is the setup PR still open or is that merged? Nope, it finally merged. Um, Yay. <laughs> and we picked a meeting time as well. Maybe. So we picked Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Central. Mm -hmm. um, we just need to figure out if we want to do the same week as this meeting or if we want to do the off week. Um, I think governance, you're doing the off week, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's honestly just because of when we started. Yeah. It wasn't a strategy. I don't know if anyone has opinions or suggestions on that. Uh. 
my dog has opinions, but I don't think they'd be valuable for this. So yeah, no, Sorry. I would. I mean, everything, I would... everything else being equal. So here's my suggestion for why you should do off week. Yeah. If you do off week, that means your first meeting can be next week. Perfect. Done. I like the off week anyway too, because otherwise I feel like that one week is overloaded. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Whenever, whenever you like. Also, Caroline's remember next week is a holiday though. Yeah. Okay. Um, Next week's a holiday, so keep that in mind for lead up time and all that. Cool. Yep. Okay. So, anything else from contributor growth? Uh, no, no. I think we just we just need it. We need to like re kick off. <laughs> okay. So, I have a question for you, um, which which actually has to do with the repo, etc., which mm -hmm. is. Uh, both contributor growth and governance are going to be working on updating, expanding, clarifying the CNCF requirements at the various project levels. How do we want to set that up? You know, like I initially set it up where we have a requirements subdirectory under the governance directory with the idea that sort of we'd be working on governance requirements separately from contributor growth and have no conflicts and that sort of thing. I'm starting to rethink that because now that we're actually getting in mucking about with some of the actual requirements, number one, the line between governance and contributor growth is not entirely clear. Um, because for example, the diversity, the maintainer diversity requirement, there's a governance part of that which says, how do we define you must have, you know, external maintainers, right? But there's also contributor growth because, you know, it's like, we can't just require this. We also need to explain how do you get external maintainers? Um, the, um, so I'm like actually kind of wondering if, if we want to have sort of a shared set of requirements documents, even though that'll be slightly less coordinated, it's more what we need in terms of output. I feel like we have, a problem though with any of these things related to governance where we're always going to have a requirement and then a recommendation on mm -hmm. how to meet that requirement mm -hmm. and that requirement directory is going to get to become like a, a junk drawer if we shove everything in there let me, let me know if people feel otherwise i think it may be helpful if we reference people or like link people off to where we have best practices and and uh, advice and templates on how to accomplish yeah. those things. Yeah. And that's where we collaborate. Yeah. A lot yeah. of the stuff that contributor growth does, I think will be in a templates and best practices section. In contribute, um, right? And then, yeah, there will definitely be times where I think we all collaborate together on requirements and stuff. Um, and vice versa, honestly. Um, yeah. But I mean, there are also requirements that are definitely in the wheelhouse of contributor growth. Like for example, um, require, like there are existing requirements around uh, contributor activity levels. Um, the, um, you know, and, and from our perspective, we have different working groups for these things, but from the perspective of the TOC, they want one set of requirements. So, and we'll, but, I mean, we would present them as one set of requirements, yeah. okay. but I'm saying, I guess for us to do our work and to organize, that's... Okay. Okay. Okay, and that said, should I move on to governance work group? Or is there anything else for contributor growth? No, sounds good. Okay. Governance work group, um, I, I got pulled into some uh, urgent discussions around the diversity requirement, uh, mainly because of one project, NATS, that meets other requirements for graduation, but the TOC does not feel meets the diversity requirement or they're on the border about whether or not they meet the diversity requirement. Um, the, um, that ended up being really complicated. Um, I will say that that is actually um, the special urgency for the diversity requirement has actually gone away because it turns out that NATS's situation is much more complicated than that. 
And, and even if we straightened out diversity requirement issues tomorrow, it would not necessarily allow them to proceed. So, um, so I- Can you clarify that a little bit? Do you mean that they have other governance or requirements that they don't meet? So diversity isn't the only thing holding them up? Um, the, um, There's, I mean that they have, NATS was inducted as a project before the current set of requirements was passed by the TOC. Oh, okay. And as such, they actually have disagreements with the current set of requirements. Oh. Based on when they joined. Um, so. Wouldn't that be pretty much all projects though? I mean. Yeah, but a lot of projects don't When did the new care. requirements get put in? Um, well, yeah, okay. I don't know, like, like six, eight months ago. I don't, I don't remember exactly when it was. I mean, that applies okay. to a bunch of projects, but a bunch of projects are fine with the current requirements. Nats is the first one I've run across that that is un, unhappy with it. I wonder GRPC. if Slice not really thrilled with it, but we just mm -hmm. haven't raised a sink. Yeah. Because it's not worth it, to be quite frank. I wonder if um, I wonder if like when you enter the sandbox, like if your if like the requirements should lock at that date, so that you know if there is changing TOCs and requirements change, then you're still held against what was determined at that point of entrance. It sounds like a logistical nightmare. Uh, I don't know. It's, yeah. I guess kind of like the, the term grandfathered, even though I don't like that yeah. term at all. Um, yeah. well, I mean, I, I get the spirit, but I also feel like the whole nature of the way CNCF is set up is like, there's always going to be TOC changes and there's always going to be a different set of perspectives and then the world changes and everything else. And like, you know, it, yeah. there's always going to be stuff that goes on and changes. Um, I mean, it's and grandfathering Grandfathering creates technical debt. Yeah. That you then carry for the rest of time. So the um, um but that does mean like I don't think it's crazy to expect a project to evolve in the same way that CNCF evolves because cloud cloud native landscape is evolving and all of that. So Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's just a matter of like lead time and expectations too with that. Yeah. Yeah, we just, we have a couple of projects that join. I mean, one of the things that came up that they pointed out was in the early days of this, of the CNCF, there were no specific requirements around, um, around sort of multi-company contributions, except that you had to be open and open was not defined. Well, and even now, multi-company contributions is not defined. So. Right, yeah, and that was, that was one of the things they're working on. But it does mean that right. from perspective of, <laughs> of our work on updating the requirements, there is no longer, from my perspective, a reason why we have to get an update of the diversity requirement done first before everything else. And since I would rather present a slate of recommendations to the TOC to say, hey, you know, let's update the entire requirements framework, um, I, you know, my thoughts are, you know, and then, and we should go over this. So, um, I don't want to go into detail on that because that's what the working group meeting is for, um, and, and discussions online, um, which brings up another issue, which is it's a U.S. holiday during our normal working group meeting next week. Since April is online with me, do you want to have a meeting next week on a different day? Um, I mean, Monday's fine. I'm out all week anyway. So, um, you know, it's fine with me if we do it Monday or a later day. Um, I'm flexible. It's not like we're going anywhere. So. Yeah, I'd rather, I mean, I would rather do it a later day just because 
I, I, I hate having a day where I have nothing else and then have one meeting. <laughs> I hear you. I'm hearing you. I, I, what yeah, tends to happen is I tend to show up to those meetings really late. Yeah, I'm fine. I, like I said, it's a, it's a fairly okay. flexible uh, week. I just have, um, I can't do Wednesday at 10 or Thursday at 9, but other okay. than that. Well, so what about Tuesday afternoon? Just shift it to That's Tuesday. That's fine. That works. Okay. Um, so one of the other things is Terrence is here um, and wanted to briefly touch on the end user requirement. Um, uh, actually, here's a good question. Terrence, would you be able to come back at, on Tuesday um, next week to do a more in-depth discussion of the end user requirement? We'll touch on it briefly here. Uh, when you say 10, what time zone are you talking oh, about? Sorry, uh, one, sorry, 1 p.m. next week, Pacific time. I don't know what time zone you're in. So if you're in like uh, central, time zone. so I think that's like 11 a.m. Right? Central? No, central. It's 3 p.m. Oh, 3 p.m. Uh, yes, I can do that. Okay. So, um, so in brief, let's touch on the other thing that we will be discussing next week, which is the end user requirement. Um, uh, do you want to summarize the issue, the blocker that you're having with the end user requirement? for governance? Yeah, so I, I guess like kind of just broad context, the Cloud Native Build Packs project is under the app delivery SIG. Yeah. Uh, we were a sandbox project like a year and a half ago. We're going through incubation and we filled out a due diligence doc. Um, and there's questions of basically what end users mean for our project. So um, the project is mostly a specification, I guess, under like cloud events um, where we define like a standard or a set of things of like how you can use build packs and the spec and there's some tooling provided around that, but we ourselves aren't hosting any build packs, but um, uh, like a platform, uh, like most of the kind of companies that would are interested in our project tend to be like cloud vendors. So like uh, Google just announced support for uh, cloud native build packs and built a bunch of cloud native build packs on top of it and you can use it with the Google cloud platform. And for us, that's like a big win, like for usage and, and stuff. But I think like according to the actual definition around end users, at least this is what like Harry from, who's the chair from the app SIG was saying to us, like the TUC may not recognize that as an end user. And so if you look at like our due diligence list, um, like a lot of our users are either open source projects that are using it, like Scaffold, um, or vendors like uh, your VMware, Heroku, Salesforce, Google, uh, deft, et cetera, that like are poignant in as a way you can like use their, like this project. And it's like documented officially, like on their websites and everything. And um, like just trying to get clarity of like what actually is an end user for the incubation requirement. Um, like there's like kind of two founding companies that are part of the project that were using it internally to build their own platforms. Um, but then there's a question of like, if someone say uses Heroku who happens to implement Build packs or Google who happens to implement build packs and they use cloud and build packs are they an end user of the project or do you have to actually like host your own like kube cluster or something that happens to have cloud and build packs as part of your build pipeline and therefore you're now an end user. I, I don't, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that opens a question. Um, and the, um, okay, so I understand the question there. And so we'll follow up on next Tuesday discussing this um, and see if we can hammer out a recommendation to the TOC on how the requirement could either be modified or clarified. Okay. Um, and by the way, one of the other things since this person isn't here, I'll do the online is that the other, um, there was another project that this was brought up in the same context for cloud events who also felt they were in the same situation. Uh, I think they, aren't they ready in incubation? Yeah, but the end user requirements get amped up for graduation. Uh, I so see, okay. The, um, yeah, they are also another similar cause they are also like a specification with tooling around it. So I guess, uh, our project is somewhat similar in that kind of scoping. <coughs> oh.
Okay. So we will cover that in that context and see if there's something that we can recommend. Uh -huh. Is that, are they looking for something like an adopters.md? What's like the literal artifact that they're looking for for that requirement? By, for that pronoun, do you mean the TOC or the yes, project yes, itself? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, like in the, the, the TOC, when they're, uh, when they're saying that uh, there's an end user requirement, like are they expecting that there's some kind of artifact in a repo well, kind of like- I guess like as, as in, in the due diligence that like I had to draft for incubation, one of the things in the template is like, there is an end user requirement of three end users. And yeah. most projects who kind of, I guess, like I've read a lot of drafts of uh, due diligence docs at this point, um, they tend to list out like three users in depth and talk about them to some degree. And then they link out to an adopters MD. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, there's no like requirements around kind of the adopters thing. Um, but yeah, the, the end users in production is kind of a big requirement, I think, for the due diligence. Yeah, and the, the goal of, as I understand it. So one of the things, by the way, that I'm, that we're going to be, that I'm going to propose that we hammer on the TOC about is that every one of these gateway requirements needs to come with a reasoning background as to why this requirement exists. Because like, I believe the reason for the end user requirement is to show that this project is actually being used and isn't just a spec created by a vendor or a group of vendors that has no actual users. Um, we're trying to avoid the C++ problem, in other words. Um, and, um, but that's my belief. The TOC has not actually endorsed that reasoning. <laughs> so, um, and we need to get the TOC to say, this is the rationale for this requirement, because if we understand the rationale, then, then the actual requirement about, say, who is an end user will become a lot clearer. Yeah, I think a lot of the stuff would be solved. Well, not necessarily solved, but like a good starting point, like you said, is like if the TOC can tell us what it is they're trying to actually get, like what their dream project looks like for each category, then we can, you know, better build out the requirement list. And then I think we also need to be clear on what a project gets by being in each category. Like what's the incentive to graduate? The, um, so, okay. Um, so more about that next week. Um, uh, April, did we have anything else we wanted to say about current work? When we set up the directories, I still need to set up a bunch of work in progress documents. Um, the, yeah, I um, think the, you know, the diversity thing was, like you said, the, uh, the fire. And it sounds yeah. like, so, the conversation that's happening around that, do you, where is that happening? Um, it's, it's now going to be happening. Issue. Yeah, it's now happening actually, honestly, with Chris and the TOC. Basically, okay. I had a conversation with Nats. I said, Contribstrat can't solve this because the project is not asking for governance help. The project is asking TOC to examine their policies, and that is strictly a TOC mm -hmm. matter. Um, so I basically have handed it back to the TOC and to the CNCF staff. Okay. Um, and if this circles around and the project in the TOC agree that the project is going to do something or whatever and they want help doing it, then it'll come back to us. The, um, in the meantime, yeah, and I guess, and I'll link the diversity requirement draft thing that we came up with into the WIP documents, which I will get checked into the repo this afternoon. So, okay, so next up, maintainer circle. Um, this is Paris, Carolyn, who's maintainer circle? Me and Steven, who is not on the line right now. Um, but that's actually one of the first points is that I'm going to solicit help um, for planning uh, the maintainer circle inside of our intro email with the survey. Um, so that's why I'm also trying to get this, uh, get this out uh, 
to folks quickly so we can get some help here. Um, I need to get the link for the PR that I just checked in, but this is the, the README for the maintainer circle. Um, so I wanted to talk about how we can get this out of a proposed state uh, and into something more legit. Um, and Stephen is not on the call. He approved the PR though. So I wanted to get your thoughts on it as well. Hold on, let me get the link. Um, while I get the link, uh, the, uh, one of the next steps too was to get a Slack channel going. Uh, and thoughts were the obvious of maintainer circle. Um, so it had a clear direction on what it is uh, exactly. Uh, and if everybody's cool with that, uh, Eeyore told me that I needed to submit a service desk ticket. So I can do that as well and I can take that action. Um, but I wanted to get everybody's take on what they think about getting the maintainer circle out of a proposed state. But I'm still trying to find the link. I don't know. It, it sounds like you need a co-lead for that who's not already on 17 other committees. Um, I know, and that's why I feel like part of the email is that uh, call for help. Um, because I've had a number of people come to me saying how excited they were about this. Not many of them said that they were willing to help. Um, but I'm, here it is, maintainer circle. I've got it right here. Link. Copy. What do you need the service desk ticket for? To create a Slack channel. In the CNC app? Correct. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but you don't actually need that. You can just make one. I it helps did. Track work. <laughs> Sorry? It's a track work about like what kind of requests are coming in where, that's why. Oh, okay. And I thought that I did, and I think someone may have deleted it actually. Well, if it's not, it's understanding if it's not an official channel, if it's not created by the Slack admin, then when everyone exits the channel, it ceases to exist. I didn't exit the channel though. Well, okay. Well, I don't know then. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You were just told me if next time I wanted a, a channel that I needed to file a service mm -hmm. desk ticket. So Oops. That's why I wanted to see if everybody was cool with that so that I could follow the ticket and get that going. And that's really it for me. Okay. Okay, so we only have, um, we have 15 minutes for open issue and PR review. Um, let me see if anything is urgent and let me see if I can. Oh, let go, sorry. I was trying to arrange things so that I could actually share my screen. Um, okay, are people seeing that? Yeah, I can yep. see it. Okay, uh, so only open PR is clean up communications on README. Looks like Carolyn just opened that. So that presumably just needs an LGTM. Oh, yeah, it's got an LGTM. 
So I'm going to go ahead and merge that. Because cleanup issues should not need more than one LGTM. We should probably create those kinds of rules, though. Um, like, you know, how many LGTMs do we need for something? Um, Are you still okay. doing the pull request.md? I had you down to yeah. do, yep. do that one. That is still on my to-do list. So, yes. Okay. Um, okay. So... Other issues, end user promotion criteria, we just went over. Diversity requirement graduated projects, we just went over. Um, uh, crowdsource your expertise here. That's a perpetually open issue, presumably. Um, the draft maintainer circle welcome email. is the stuff we went over in the maintainer circle. Um, that Paris needs more help on. So, yeah, and it really does seem like we should combine this with the maintainer survey in order to minimize the amount of noise we're creating. We are, scroll down, like the, the link and the agenda today yeah. Has all, it, that's comboed. Everything's comboed. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. Create a discovery survey, which we just discussed. Um, recruiting contributors playbook is contributor growth documents. So, part of your work? Yeah, I think this is like a pride two or one or something for our working group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our working uh, governance working group is going to end up starting with requirements just because the TOC is asking for us to do requirements stuff. Um, the, um, and I think probably resources are just going to start out with linking external resources unless someone else has a lot of time to write original stuff um, because uh, but contributor growth may be able to take the opposite tack um, so create a resources page is there a blocker on that no i'll take that today okay i'll do it yeah, because it seems like you could create a blank resources page. Yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 Without yeah. much work. I'll take yeah. it. I'll, no, I and the reason why I have it, I think Eeyore said that he was going to. Um, okay. So I'll I'll do it today though. Oh, uh, let me close launch governance sub project because clearly that is Yay! launched. Um, the um, do 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 do. Okay. And okay, contributor at GitHub management. Are there trailing issues for this? We've created users, we've created oh right, because this was sort of open is whether or not we're gonna have Ah, so this is in Stephen Augustus's course in terms of wanting to do a few more things. So you should do it today. It was the only thing that needs to be done is a project board at the CNCF repo level. That's it. Is that who who can physically create that? I don't think I can. I don't think I have the permissions to do so. I can do it. Okay. Hunt me down when it's ready. Uh, when what's ready? We're just talking we about need, a blank project board. Like, like the uh, project board. Okay, that works too. <laughs> Fine. That works. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we're just asking for a blank project board and then we will populate it with things. All right. <laughs> I will hop over in there and do it. Cool. Okay. Populate it with work. <laughs> yep. Do um, we have those teams that were mentioned at the root of this issue? Do those exist now? So that we yes. she can assign those yep. teams permission. Okay. 
Oh, wait, teams. Teams, teams, teams. Um, they may not exist. So that when she makes the board, she can give those teams permission yeah, to that's a good use point. the board? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so, so wait, Amy, first I need to look and see whether or not I can create teams in settings YAML or whether I have to create them through the GitHub UI. I suspect that I have to create them through the GitHub UI because I think settings.yaml is still limited. Because I think the team would need to be at the org level, right? In order to assign it from an org level board? Jesus, I don't know. I think so. Is, is somebody, a, somebody a more serious GitHub admin than I am? Yeah. I mean, this is how I do it for Porter, and I think okay. I had to do it at the Okay, so, so in that case, Amy needs a list of teams and who should be on them. And then, and then she can create the thing. So let me update that. Okay, and... The board and the team are created. I just need to be able to know who all to be able to add the team to because here is your lovely team. And note the uh, board is over in chat as well. Okay. Um, shouldn't we have shouldn't we have a team per working group as well? Uh, I'm happy to be able to create like a, yeah. a sub project of mm -hmm. the contributor strategy. That's okay. Okay. So I will get you that list. Okay. Um, got a couple of minutes left. Let's see what else do we have here. Um, CNCF community repo is an idea for discussion. Um, however, there has not been a lot of discussion on that. Um, inventory and things. Is that meant to be a perpetual issue for us to just put stuff under? Paris? No, it should it should close. Can you open it to see what's left? Yeah, let me see. Uh, resources pages mostly, and and those are still open. So and the survey, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay, and. So the sort of conclusion was that the CNCF actually already has a quote unquote community repo, which is called CNCF slash contribute. Um, that repo needs work. I think if you go to the very last comment on that issue, it's more representative of what needs to happen next. Okay, it does feel like we should close this issue and open an issue of get the contribute repo into shape. But the um, Okay, I don't understand Paris's last comment there. So Eris, defend yourself. Right, you don't need to defend yourself. I just don't understand what she's saying needs to be done. It was add a description of the repos that we have, aka we have the contribute repo, we have this, the SIG contributor strategy repo, what mm -hmm. each one is, which we already did. I put that we've completed that with the contributing markdown file, mm -hmm. but we have not done that in the readme but we've innuendoed in the readme that we have some repos. So I'm just saying that we should clear some confusion there. Mm -hmm. And then the discussion point was, do any of these working groups operate in any one of these repos primarily? I didn't know if like, if we should map that to like GitHub, the issue that we just talked about. 
uh, that's just like more advanced stuff that is not a blocker for the issue. Uh, that's why I put discussion, what do you think? Uh, but the one thing that I do think is we just need to update the README um, with some of yeah. that just minor information. Okay, so link out and that sort of thing. I mean, honestly, what I would say looking at the contrib repo is that it would make sense to actually have this split more in that stuff that's work in progress goes in our repo in SIG contributor strategy. And when something is going to be published, we copy it, we copy the published version to the contribute repo. And that's how we have I don't know if that's listed. complicated, but. As long as we can make sure that the people who have contributed that work still keep their attribution, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, because yeah, someone who lost her contributions, seeing stuff get copied around in the Kubernetes repo. Yeah. It, you know. Yeah, and obviously it would be easier to have branches in the contribute repo. Um, you know, feature branches because then you can just merge stuff. Yeah. Um, the um, So if we did that, then the SIG contributor strategy repo would become largely a, a skeleton, you know, as in these are the work what we're working on, but the actual work would be done elsewhere. I like the idea of branches, kind of like a dev branch or just, you know, yeah. propose. Um, we have this written out somewhere. Hold on one second. I'm looking in our documentation. Here it is. Um, we have the contributing guide says, quote, CNCF slash contribute will house contributing information and guidance that we provide to CNCF project for contributor strategy topics. The intention is to grow this as a resource for all contributors, aspiring current and maintainers. Um, and then the CNCF SIG contributor strategy says contains our meta docs that cover our governance, how we operate and resources that we collect along the way. So templates and things should go into the contribute. Whereas anything that we're working on, and I guess work in progress as well as operations would be SIG contributor strategy. Okay. Um, yeah. So that doesn't that doesn't rope us into doing anything in particular right. in the way of how we get content published there. Um, so kind of feels, I mean, I would find using the contribute repo for branch based development easier. It, it's more of a get workflow. Um, the um, and and just using our own repo for stuff that has to do with our own SIG. And for very work in progress stuff that we haven't figured out where it would go in the contribute repo yet. Um, would that work for people? Yeah, I like that. That'll require us to get access to the contribute repo, but. I think we're gonna need that eventually anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I will follow up on the infra issue on permissions on the contribute repo. Um, I, and follow up with the CNCF to make sure that they don't have any objections to that workflow. And then we'll see. Let me create, I will create an issue for myself. So let's put that in notes as an action item. Okay, Any, anything else? We're at time for end of meeting. Okay, well, thanks everybody. Happy quarantining. <laughs> Bye all. <laughs>